everybody. Did you miss me? I know you miss me. Come on, tell me. You can be honest. I know. It's your man Apollo. Back at it again. Rolling solo. Got a good video for you guys today. <coughs> and this is the water cooler talk around town. Uh, just a couple of things I want to talk to y'all about. And this will be one of the multiple videos that I'll upload for y'all today. But let's get this out of the way. Uh, two topics to cover here. Is Eli Manning a Hall of No, actually we're going to go three topics. Three topics. One, is Eli Manning worthy of the Hall of Fame? How or what was my reaction and thoughts to Zion Williams' debut last night? And I just wanted to get my thoughts on the Kansas, Kansas State brawl from a couple of days ago. But so let's go ahead and get started. No further ado, Eli Manning. Mm. Eli has announced or a source has announced that Eli Manning will be retiring tomorrow on Friday and the question going around the water cooler talk all the networks and everyone is discussing people are literally arguing with me. should Eli Manning be put in the hall of fame and from my opinion my opinion I know I'm not a reporter or a journalist. I didn't take journalism in high school, but I'm not a reporter. I don't have, and I put this in air quotes, the credentials, but I know the game of football. I play the game of football at a high level. Maybe not the NFL, but I've played at a high level. Eli Manning was an NFL quarterback, no doubt. He did win two Super Bowls. Both against Tom Brady, who is arguably the greatest, if not player, quarterback to ever put on cleats and play this game of football. But to answer the question, do I feel Eli Manning, the Hall of Fame quarterback, Hall of Fame, out of the 2,500 plus players that played in the NFL, little under 400. 300 have actually been enshrined. Do I think Eli Manning should be one of those select few? I am going to say no. I do not. Full Apollo, he won two Super Bowls in his third birdie. <laughs> Shut up. Stop it. We stop it right there. First of all, that first Super Bowl, that defense won that Super Bowl for Eli Manning. All right? We all know that. I do not believe Eli Manning should have won that Super Bowl MVP. He did not deserve it. He did not do anything to win it. He played, if anything, a just average game. But he beat Tom Brady and the Patriots. Again, that defense won that Super Bowl. And if you're going to argue with me, well, here's a question that I propose to you, fellow viewer who wants to argue this point. If that defense would not have shown up the way they did against Tom Brady and that is very super high powered offense. If Eli Manning had to stand in there and go blow for blow, toe to toe with Tom Brady and match his offensive power, do you think he could have did it? Do you think he could have brung his team from the depths, motivated them, and then blow for blow with Tom Brady? No. No, he could have not. And we you know, don't give me that. Well, he didn't have any talent. <laughs> they got the Super Bowl, right? He got the Super Bowl. You don't give me he didn't. Have, I mean, this dude had. He's had Victor Cruz before. Before Victor Cruz got hurt, Victor Cruz was an elite receiver. Don't argue with me. On that. Victor Cruz was saucing over everybody's asses when he was scoring touchdowns. Then he got Odell Beckham Jr. They went to the playoffs, got ran right. He had on that team when they won a couple years ago, when Odell tried, not tried, but when he decided to take everybody to Miami before the playoff game, he had talent on that field. Don't give me this, he didn't have talent. Because we use the same argument for Tom Brady. And what has Tom Brady always done? When? Tom Brady has had two. High caliber receivers. 
Julian Edelman is not a Hall of Fame caliber receiver to me. I don't care what anyone says. He had Randy Moss for a couple years, and he had Ron Gronkowski. Well, last time I checked, before both of them even got there, before Edelman got there, before Wes Welker got there, what did Tom Brady do? He won three Super Bowls. He didn't have the best offense, and he had a defense. But guess what? Tom Brady got it done. Tom Brady was getting done in the regular season before Randy Moss got there, before Edelman got there, before Gronk got there. Eli Manning, I am not knocking the man's game. I'm not saying he is not good, but he is not great. The Hall of Fame is for great players. Stop putting people in because we have sympathy for them because they're sitting and waiting. At what point in this league was Eli Manning ever the man? And his eyes played in New York. At what point do we ever look at the New York Giants and say, damn, Eli's the fucking man. We never did that. Never. We always said Tom Brady's a man. His brother Peyton was a man. Big Ben, hell, even at one point became the man. We looked at Michael. If Eli gets in, I better see Michael Vick in the Hall of Fame. Because Eli was never anywhere as popular as Michael Vick was. I guarantee you that. So if Eli Manning's ass gets in the Hall of Fame, then we better put Michael Vick. And don't get me, well, he has two Super Bowls. Well, because Dan Marino has no Super Bowls. And you're not about to sit up here and tell me Dan Marino is not a better quarterback than Eli Manning. Because we're going to go about Super Bowls. Then Trent Dilfer from that Ravens team in 2000 needs to get in the Hall of Fame. And so does Nick Foles from a couple years ago. Because guess what? He beat Tom Brady too. And it had Rob Gronkowski. And it had Edelman. And Tom Brady threw for 500 plus in that game. And guess what? Nick Foles still beat him. So you tell me, what makes Eli Manning a Hall of Famer? Two passes in a Super Bowl makes him a Hall of Famer? No. Again, I'm not trying to sound like I'm hating on Eli. But no, Apollo, yes you are. You are hating on Eli. You're just a bitter ass Cowboys fan. I respect game. Game, respect game. Real, recognize real. I ain't a Patriots fan, but I guess what? I guarantee you, I respect Tom Brady's game. I appreciate Tom Tom Brady, you cannot write NFL history without Tom Brady. You can rewrite NFL history without Eli Manning. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. He's going to get in the Hall of Fame because the name on that back of his jersey from the riding the coattails of what his brother did. For what his dad did in college. Because when Eli was at Ole Miss, he wasn't really doing anything. He was Peyton Manning's little brother. And at that time of the draft, Peyton Manning was killing it in the NFL. Revolutionizing the passing game around the early, mid 2000s That's what Peyton Manning was doing. What has Eli Manning done to leave his stamp on the game? Because, yeah, he may have threw that pass. But David Tyreek, you know what? Here, here. For, for anyone who's still just listening and they're just like, nah, you're a jackass, you don't know what I'm talking about. Here's the thing. Eli Manning does what he does in both those Super Bowls with that one catch to Tyree and the other pass to, um, what was his name, Mario Manningham. And they lost. Would you still put him in the Hall of Fame? Would you still? Or let's say this. If Eli Manning... Against the Patriots that year, the Patriots were undefeated. But Eli came in through for 400 yards, five touchdowns, and he lost. Would you still put him in? Hmm? Ask yourself that question. Eli Manning is not a Hall of Famer. I am sorry. Let me rephrase that. I am not sorry. Eli Manning is not a Hall of Famer. Take it or leave it. I don't care what no one says. In my opinion, he has not done enough for the game of football or the game in the NFL to warrant Hall of Fame, except to be Archie Manning's son and Peyton Manning's little brother. That's it. Every, I don't care what no that damn that Super Bowl MVP. First of all, they the second one, ah, uh, maybe that first one, hell no, 
Hell no. Because Big Ben's two Super Bowls, he ain't got no Super Bowl MVP. Big Ben's Super Bowl those games for the defense. Defense. You can't, can't run defense for no Super Bowls. And, it, and Ben arguably had a better throw to Antonio Holmes in a Super Bowl against Arizona. You can't. You tell me which catch more difficult. David Tyree, damn it, he pretty much just boxed out. Rodney Harrison went up, made the, made the catch, caught it against his helmet. Antonio Holmes, I think that catch is a lot harder than that pass was a light, lot tighter of a window to get to. So for anybody that's crying or right now just throwing shit or screaming or they've probably already cut the video off by now, I am sorry. Eli Manning is not a Hall of Famer. That's my take on it. Take it how you want. Take it away. But moving on. Zion Williamson made his NBA debut last night. I didn't catch much of it, but you know, I caught the highlights because they're gonna we're gonna talk about this kid for like the next week. Uh, first off, let me say I'm glad he's finally playing because because of Zion Williamson because of him. This past not this past year, but the season before he got drafted was the most I've ever I've ever been invested in college basketball. I do not watch college basketball. Half the time, I don't know who, who, who the players are, except for Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Texas. Maybe Kansas, that's it. I don't know who none of them are until they come to the league. Zion has so much hype coming to Duke. I was watching his highlights, I was like, this dude is unreal. And then I saw how big, that dude is a damn, he ain't a defensive end, he is a D tackle. He is a defensive tackle. A nose tackle in a 3-4 out there leaping like LeBron James. That, if that ain't God-given ability, man. Oh, my, that kid. He is extra blessed. Somebody in his generation back in the day, fuck the gorilla or something. <laughs> that dude, man. That dude is extra blessed. He is a god. He's literally... What we go do on 2K when we create a player, we turn him into Zion Williamson. That's what he is. He's a real life. God was playing 2K when he thought of no 2K. So Zion 19. God was playing yeah, the original NBA 2K where I was, he was playing NBA Live 2000 with Tim Duncan on the cover when he thought of Zion Williamson. <laughs> That's what he was doing. And I hope I ain't offend nobody with that gorilla comment. By the way, I'm black. If you didn't know, so it ain't racist. It's racist? It's not racist. But he had a good game uh, from the highlights. Uh, I will say this: he does look a little uh, pudgy. He was already a big dude, but he like he was a lean, like 280, 285. He was a lean high school and, and at Duke in college. Now he looks like his stomach was, if you get a steel shot of him from the side, you'll see that he's just, he just not in full basketball shape. I really hope for his sake because two of my favorite players in the basketball ever got taken out with injury. That was Tracy McGrady and Derrick Rose. And I, and I pray that Russell Westbrook doesn't get taken out with but I'm so glad I love those wrestling. I love those quick, athletic, above the rim players out there that play hard with passion. Zion Williamson needs, needs to drop down to at least, I would say about 250. He needs to find LeBron's dietitian. He needs to get an advance check from Nike or Jordan. He needs to get a look his body. Because I would be so sad if he turns out like Sean Kemp. Remember Sean Kemp when he first came to the league? Dude was built like a tank. Then he just got fat. Just out of nowhere, just boom, pumped up. You know? Or he could be like, I would rather him be like Carl Malone. Just this mountain of a muscle just dominating the paint. Because his. I tell you, as a guy who has knee problems and I just turned 30, he is, he is a 
and I'm only 210 pounds. All right, at my heaviest, I've I've been 210 pounds. If I'm if I'm doing a long intermittent fasting and I'm eating real clean, I drop to like 198, 197. But at my heaviest, I'm like 210. This guy's 280, 285, six six. He's a damn defensive lineman out there, jumping around like he's Derrick Rose size. That is just insane. But somebody, somebody gonna get caught this year. Somebody gonna come in the lane. Some old veteran or somebody gonna try to test this kid, and they're gonna find out the hard way. <laughs> you better get your ass out the way. Zion Williamson gonna put somebody out on the post. They gonna put him on the milk carton because we ain't gonna know what happens to that guy. After he body bags the shit out of that person, but I wish nothing but the best for him. I'm glad he's finally playing. I was, I'm excited. I was excited for the city of New Orleans. They need this. I mean, that crowd was like it was at Duke. So I can imagine though. I bet they jacked them ticket prices up, knowing he was coming back. Because that that year at Duke, when like that game, especially that game like Obama showed up to. Like they were jacking up those they saying Duke ticket prices for a college basketball game were exceeding prices of Super Bowl tickets. Super Bowl. College basketball nowhere near losing the amount of revenue as the NFL. Especially for Super Bowl. So that's how you know this game's a big deal. And then social media just like like puts it on steroids with how he's out there. So man, I'm so glad he's back. I'm happy for him. I wish the best for him. I hope he can stay healthy. And I hope over the summer and the offseason, he drops the weight. Because with how hyped I was feeling, I can imagine how the crowd was feeling and how the players were feeling. Like, and I'm looking, I'm not the biggest seller of Lonzo Ball. But him and Lonzo, I think Lonzo can be like a great value Jason Kidd. Just tall. I think Lonzo could do the average of, he could average a triple double with like 12, 13 points. 14 assists and like 10 rebounds because he's like six seven and he light skin too but that's 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 not the point <laughs> uh i wish the best for zion i hope his next game well i know they plan for him to be playing so i'm definitely gonna catch a prime time game whenever they show that on tv again uh i'm gonna have to look at the schedule but i'll definitely keep you guys up to date on that last topic of this video here uh, a couple of days ago there's a brawl between Kansas University and Kansas State players. Uh, it was a basketball game. Uh, Kansas was blowing K-State out the water because I mean, it's Kansas. Kansas is one of the premier basketball schools. Now, if it was football, probably the other way around. But in basketball, Kansas Jayhawks ranked supreme over Kansas State Wildcats. Well, I, I, I saw the clip at the end of the game. Uh, it's like what, five seconds left. And the Kansas player, he's trying to just dribble out the clock, you know, just let the game in. Well, the Kansas State player steals the ball. And he goes and tries to attempt a layup. And that same Kansas player just like rejects him. Reject Throws his shit out of there. Then he stares him down. That happens. I mean, it's just part of the game. Well, then the K State players, for some reason, clear the bench and then run over. And start this big ass brawl. And I'm thinking, first of all, why'd y'all come off the bench? All he did was stare him down. Like, why are you gonna steal the ball and try to score? You just got rejected for being stupid. So why y'all emptying the bench? To come start a fight. I mean, are you salty that you losing one ten to like forty five? I'd be salty too. But I'd be salty ready to get the hell out of there and not start a fight. And jeopardize my college career, possibly go to pro or something, G League. You know, you might get lucky. Right place, right time. But one Kansas player, dude picked up a stool. I was like, yo, he crazy for that. Like he, like, I tell you what, but in that situation, I immediately thought, if that kid hit somebody's kid, if like if that was my kid, if I'm the parent and my kid got hit by that stool. I don't care how tall that player is, 6'10", whatever. He gonna have to come see me. If he's 6'10", and I'm like five foot now, I'm punching him square in his dick. You gonna have to come see me, bro. You're not finna hit my kid with no damn stool. 
I don't give a damn if it is a brawl. If anything, you need to try to stop the brawl. Don't pick up a stool. I said, you would have to come see me. I would have I went up to that school and where he at? Bring his big ass out here. He had to come see me, but it's it's bad recognition, but it puts recognition on college basketball. Because nobody talks about college basketball, except those college basketball heads, you know? There's really not a casual fan for college basketball because some games final score be like 40 to 30. Who wants to watch that? We don't want to watch no goddamn 40. People score that more than that in a quarter in the NBA. Why would we want to watch a full game for the final score 40 to 30? This, this, this ain't high school. There are high school teams that score more than that. You know what I'm saying? And I get there's more college programs because it's easier to fund college basketball because there's only like 11 people on the team at most. But I don't I don't watch college basketball. But when I saw that that brawl was happening, I, was like, I merely thought of the Pistons Pacers brawl because I watched that game live. <laughs> I remember then our test won no part of Ben Wallace, and then he laid on the, uh, the announcer table and that fan threw a beer. I would have went out to that fan too. I'm not gonna just throw a beer at you. I ain't gonna say nothing to you. That was messed up. But that's my thought. Guys, give me leave me what you give me your thoughts. Leave down in the comment section what you think. Is Eli Manning a Hall of Famer? But leave down in the comment section what you think. And do you think Eli Manning transcended the game of football? No, but tell me what you think. Also, give me your thoughts on Zion Williamson. Did you like his debut? Do you, do you fear for his health? What do you think is the future for him in the NBA? Also, getting your thoughts on who started and who was wrong in the KU, K-State Brawl. All right, guys, this is Apollo. Y'all take care. Have a great day. I'll be back within a little bit. If you guys are new with you, I owe y'all. All right? And then, of course, Saturday, y'all just get ready. Unfiltered podcast. We're going to be talking about some tech shit, all right? And this will be episode four coming up. And this will probably be the longest of the unfiltered to date. Because it's only the fourth one. But you guys, you know, if you keep it locked here on the channel. Make sure you like the video. If you're new here, please subscribe. Uh, share the content with your friends and family. Help me grow. Join the Apollo movement. I'm trying to take over the world. One YouTube video at a time. All right, y'all. All right. My channel, I'm going to talk about sports, movie, movie gaming, tech, shit that's going on in the world, relationship, it don't matter. How to raise your kids, how to cook, how to wash your feet, wash your ass, you name it. I'll talk about it, right? Thank you guys for listening. Y'all take care. And as always, Apollo 